Hey everyone, Madrybred here. Elder Scrolls Oblivion with only illusion magic was hilarious and brutal, so let's follow that up with a brutal Pokemon run. Today's the day that we figure out, would I be able to beat Pokemon Ruby with a team of only in-game traded Pokemon? So Pokemon Ruby only has three in-game traded Pokemon the whole game, so we're not gonna have a full team. Not only that, but because traded Pokemon have obedience issues if overleveled past whatever cap your badges give you, we are almost for sure going to have sections of the run where we have to hope our Pokemon will do what we tell them to do just to win very basic fights. On top of that, do you see the locations of these Pokemon? We're only going to have Makahita until after the fifth gym. Overleveling is going to be a nightmare. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I'm gonna say that I can win, but the whole first half of this game is just gonna be brutal. Let's explain the rules. I'm only allowed to use Pokemon that I've gotten from in-game trades. I'm allowed to use HM Pokemon at required parts since it would be impossible otherwise, but I can't use those Pokemon in battle. We have to do every trade that's in the game. For Pokemon that we need to evolve before trading, we're allowed to grind them on wild Pokemon till they evolve, but we're not allowed to use them to progress in the game. No glitches or exploits, and of course, no items in battle either than held items and Pokeballs. Items are allowed outside of combat, though. Let's do this. So the first trade isn't until Rustboro City, so the challenge doesn't really start until we get there. On the way there, I catch Slack off, since I'll need it for the trade, and when we get there, we trade it to Elissa to get a Makahita named Makit. He's gonna be able to hit like a freight train and have tons of health, but defense, special attack, special defense, and speed are always gonna be pretty terrible. Considering obedience will be an issue if he levels too much, this could really be a problem. First thing I do is train him up to level 10. Yeah, it'll make him disobedient, but it's when he learns his first fighting type move and the first gym is a rock type one, so I really don't have a choice. When I got to the rock gym, we ended up being level 13 from fighting trainers inside, but even with vital throw, we still can't take out the first Geodude because Makit disobeys us just that much. Between Geodude's high defense and defense curl and our own issues with Makit not listening, we're gonna need to be at least a few levels higher to overpower her. Even after a solid seven more attempts at level 15 though, we still only get one try where we can even beat Geodude. Disobedience is seriously a massive hindrance, and I'm not looking forward to having Makit be disobedient for the majority of this game. Even grinding is brutal at this point in the game. Because of our terrible defense stat, we still take massive damage from simple moves like Peck, and because we're both super slow and often just don't attack, we actually faint pretty often. Yes, we are fainting while grinding even with a 10 level lead on a regular basis. This is gonna be rough. Finally, at level 18, after tons of tries, we lucked out and got enough crits and enough obedience luck that Makit finally took down her team. Next gym is the fighting one though, and considering I think they might have someone with focus punch on that team, I might not always succeed in stopping it. That's gonna be brutal. When I get to the fighting gym, our disobedience is so bad that we're routinely losing fights with random trainers. This totally normal trainer took me four tries just to beat because Makit just wouldn't follow any of our orders. Even after evolving and having this run against Brawly that we were obviously going to win, hands down, Makit disobeyed us so many times in a row that we lost anyway. I forgot just how frustrating trade Pokemon runs can be. Finally, after many, many attempts, we just get lucky enough to finally land our hits and get ourselves a win on the fighting gym. Thankfully, that means that until level 30, Makit will obey us. That's not gonna last very long though, especially with the boosted experience gains that he gains, so we're going to need to make use of this while we can. Now that Makit is listening to us, we ended up sweeping through our rival's team on the next fight. Mind you, part of the one-shots is that we've been very lucky with crits, but we really couldn't have lost that fight. The Electric Gym though? That one has me worried. I try to make sure I skip as many trainers as I can getting to the Electric Gym to keep our level low, and it pays off. This is a fight that we easily would lose over and over if Makit wasn't listening to us, but thanks to this being Ruby, and thus the gym leader had more steel types, we managed to throw his whole team. I don't know about you, but I always thought a Vital Throw kind of like an Exploder Suplex. Let me know in the comments section how you interpret Vital Throw. I'm actually kind of curious. Anyway, our obedience can't last much longer. There are required trainers between us and the next major fight, and we don't raise our obedience limit until after the fourth gym. So we're just gonna have to deal with having Makit do whatever he wants. 
Oh, by the way, random thought, but I'm sure some of you guys are wondering why we're not playing Pokemon Emerald. It's because the in-game trades in that game are way more bland and boring. Yeah, there's one more in it, but it's in post-game, so we wouldn't even end up getting to use it. When we get to Maxi, Makit is level 33. It started great with Mightyena going down quickly, but Golbat just isn't happening yet. It took forever to get a vital throw in, and it did almost nothing. I decided to try this many more times, this time replacing Sand Attack with the TM for Rock Tomb. We got that at the first gym. Eventually, I get this run where Mightyena goes down in one vital throw without hitting Sand Attack, Golbat doesn't take us out for once thanks to two rock tombs, and finally Camerupt went down to some vital throws, although we nearly went down and really were only saved by our opponent's bad move choice. This took a grueling 12 attempts to actually win. Next is the fire gym, but try after try after try, we usually just lose to the second slugma. If this is my best run and I didn't even hit Torkoal, then I need more levels. But this badge only lets us level up to 50, so the closer I get to 50, the higher chance that we'll end up overleveling and becoming disobedient again before we get the sixth gym badge and up the limit. Still, we just take too much damage. I've gotta level up. Finally, after just a few levels and 21 brutal attempts, we finally got to one where Makit mostly obeyed, and her Torkoal wasn't just rushing straight for overheat to take us down. With that win, Makit will finally obey us up to level 50. Let's get to that normal gym. On our way though, I took the Root Fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Normal gym time, and it goes exactly how you'd expect. Norman uses a bunch of slackings, and although their stats are amazing, they have the ability Truant, so they waste every other turn. Considering we are already a high damage fighting type, we absolutely destroyed them. We're getting close to the second trade Pokemon, so I'm incredibly careful not to fight any trainers that I don't have to. The last thing I want is for Makit to get disobedient again, and he isn't going to have an easy time with the flying gym alone in the first place, so it's probably not worth fighting until I get our next Pokemon. Although it's in Fortree City, we need to trade a Pikachu, so we have to actually ride a little bit farther and get to the Safari Zone instead. On our way though, we had to fight our rival again, but as usual she gets stomped. Is she the weakest rival in the older Pokemon games, or does Wally count as your rival? Because you only have one real fight with him where he could actually beat you, so I don't really feel like he's the rival. But then again, May and Brendan aren't that tough either. I blame the name Brendan. Brendan is just a weird sounding version of Brandon. Every Brendan wishes deep down that they were a Brandon, don't even lie. <laughs> this video is going off the rails. What's going on? So I go to the Safari Zone and... Oh, right. Yeah, I need the Pokeblock case all the way from back in Slateport, even though it's not even mandatory to use Pokeblocks in the Safari Zone. All right, be back in 15 minutes. A while later and the very first Pikachu I found, we caught in the first Safari Ball that we threw at it. That was lucky. Then we go in and trade it to Daryl to get a skitty named Skitit. <laughs> That name is terrible, and I'm not thrilled that it has Timid Nature that drops its attack, but at least we have a new Pokémon. After a bit of grinding up Skitit, that's really hard to say. I try the Flying Gym. Swellow is first, so I hit Fake Out, get hurt a bit by Aerial Ace, and took it down with Rock Tomb. Skarmory is neutral to most of our attacks, though, so I just go for Vital Throw instead. Two took it down, but we're taking a beating. For Pelipper, I switched to Skitty, mostly just to sacrifice it so I could use Fake Out again. We managed to hit Charm to lower Pelipper's attack, but it mostly uses water moves anyway. Skitty did get a lucky crit before it went down though. Back out to Makit, we hit our Fake Out and then bury him with a Rock Tomb. Last is Altaria, but it just used Dragon Dance so we took him down in two Rock Tombs. With that win, our Pokémon will now obey us up to level 70, so we've got plenty of headroom now. While we travel, I wanted you to know that What a Geek and I have started an Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire randomizer playthrough over on his channel, linked in the description. This is actually my first time playing the remix of the Gen 3 games, so I hope you enjoy. It's really fun so far. Anyway, now that I can get to the rest of the cities, I get the Sunstone from Moss Deep, catch and level up an Oddish so that evolves into Gloom, then I give it the Sunstone to evolve it into Blossom. After that, I surf down to Pacified Log City, that's a cumbersome name I've never had to say out loud, and trade it for Corroso, a Corsola. I've never actually used one of these before, but it heals while switching, and it's got some pretty cool moves like Recover and Refresh, so this should be pretty fun to use. 
This is the last trade Pokemon in the game, by the way, so that's our whole team. Time for the double battle in the Psychic Gym. Right away, Skatit gets taken down by their team ganging up on her with Psychic and Vital Throw did big damage on Lunatone. I have Corroso go for Bubble Beam on Solrock, but it ended up going down to one Psychic from Lunatone. Solrock sets up a sunny day and we finish off Lunatone with a Vital Throw. Finally, we're trading shots one-on-one -on -one with Solrock, and although we almost go down to Psychic, Vital Throw is just too strong, and we got a close victory. After that is the last of Team Magma with the Maxi fight. Mightyena went down easily with Fake Out and Vital Throw, but we lost a Sage of Attack and two Sages of Speed, so I switched for Skatit for Crobat. We managed to get an incredibly lucky crit and do a lot of damage, but we knocked ourselves out with Double Edge pretty fast. Back to Makit, and I hit Fake Out, took quite a bit of damage from Air Cutter, then finished it with Rock Tomb. Last is Camera Up, so I switch for Corroso, but get one shot by Earthquake before we can use a Water move. At least that means Makit can use Fake Out again. Earthquake brings us to low health, but one last Vital Throw took it out. With that done, we go and have a nice chat with Groudon, tell him to stop superheating the Earth, he agrees, and we can just go do the Water Gym now. First is Love Disc, but thanks to it missing Sweet Kiss, we took it down without being hit. Whiskash makes it rain and hurt us a bit before it went down in two throws, and Celio is part ice, so we take it out in one throw as well. Seeking manages to confuse us with Water Pulse, then tries to stall us out by using Hyper Potion. I decided to switch for Corroso so that I could remove the confusion as Seeking made it rain more, but Corroso can't really do anything but a bit of water damage and then go down. Seeking had a second potion, by the way. It's getting rough. Back out to Makit so we can fake it out and get a free flinch and even crit with it. I then switch to Skatit again. I'm sure you can tell I'm just trying to get more chances with Fake Out. Skatit goes down while leaving Seeking with a sliver, and Makit finishes it with Fake Out. Last is Melodic, but we're already confused by Water Pulse and hit ourselves in confusion. So close. Okay, with that loss, I fight the trainers in the gym to get a little bit more experience. I also go to the Shulk Cave and get myself a Shell Bell so that Makit can heal himself up a little bit as he deals damage. I also go and get a Moonstone from Meteor Falls and use it to evolve Skatit. She still isn't super powerful, but this is a solid upgrade for her. Finally, I try again. Things go the same until Seeking, where we didn't even get to hit Double Edge once thanks to Skatit being nailed by Horn Drill. McKit was able to take it out this time with Fake Out and Vital Throw. Last is Melodic, so I switched to Corroso, who just learned Mirror Coat. I went for it, and it would have worked great, but my Lota critically hit with Water Pulse, taking us down in one hit. That's a shame, I thought it was being clever. Back to McKit, and we just slap it with Fake Out, tank a critical Ice Beam next turn, hit Vital Throw, he uses Recover instead of finishing it, I throw him again, and he uses a Potion. We just keep throwing him around, and by this point, we've gained so much health from the Shell Bell that we survived another Ice Beam and finished him off. That's kind of a cool way to win. I like that. With that win, our traded Pokemon will now obey us up to level 100, so we finally don't need to worry at all about our level getting us into trouble. So now it's time for us to prepare for the Elite Four. First, I get the TM for Ice Beam to give to Corroso. We need a solid Ice move for taking out Drake in the Elite Four. I also get Shadow Ball for Skatit to deal with Phoebe. I figure she's a good candidate since she's normal type, so they can't use their ghost moves on her anyway. I also replace Double Edge with Return. Return is weaker, probably much weaker because I don't know if her friendship is very high, but we really need something that isn't going to make her run out of health while attacking. Lastly, I give Makit Earthquake and Brick Break. Earthquake so that we have a ground move on a strong physical attacker, and Brick Break so that I don't have to use a negative priority move as my main attack. Plus it breaks Reflect and Light Screen, that's kinda cool, might come up, don't know. After that I grind Skatit and Corroso up to level 45. It's still very underleveled for the Pokemon Champion, but this should be enough for us to at least prepare for the Wally fight, which is the last real fight before the Elite Four. Altaria is first, so I have Corroso Ice Beam it. It surprisingly didn't go down, but he did panic switch to Magneton, so I switched to Makit. I instantly got confused, hit myself, had my defense dropped, then snapped out of confusion and one hit it with Brick Break. Altaria was coming out, so I switched back to Corroso again, and Wally used a Super Potion, but those are really out of date, so we still just took it down with Ice Beam. 
I sent Skatit out for Roselia, mostly so that I could use Return and Brute Force it without risking a status affliction on my kit. We ended up taking some damage from Leech Seed, but still took it down easily. For his own Delcaddy, we just have Maket hit Fake Out and Brick Break for an easy takedown, and last is Gardevoir, so I sent out Caroso and he started using Double Team. I hit some Surfs before going down, and I thought Maket would instantly win, but he missed Fake Out thanks to Double Team. Psychic hits us for almost 200 damage, but Earthquake hits and gets us a ringly close victory. With that victory, I grind a bit more. The Pokemon champion in this game is Steven Stone, and he's actually pretty hard. I'd say he's usually harder than Wallace, but not as hard as the post-game fight with Steven Stone from Emerald. He has double the Pokemon that we do, and his Pokemon's levels are in the mid to high 50s. I decided that I need to at least get my team to level 52 if I'm gonna stand a chance. After that, let's take a look at our stats. This isn't too bad, but either than Makit's great attack, no one on this team can deal very much damage in a single hit. It's worth a try though, so make your guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Dark Trainer Sydney. Nothing much to say on this one, Makit is a powerhouse who's super effective against the whole team. So either than having to switch after Mighty Enna to get rid of Intimidate, and a scary near faint because of Swagger, we weren't in any real danger. Second is Ghost Trainer Phoebe, and we run into a totally new problem. We can't deal nearly enough damage to beat Phoebe. I know, weird problem, right? She actually has so many abilities and moves that drain our power points, mixed with the fact that we don't hit very hard. And every time I try this fight, our team is stronger than hers, but doesn't have the power points to make it to the end. Considering we have to do the whole Elite Four, we can't just run out of power points, and I don't think that hunting down every last power point up in Aether is going to patch this massive hole in our team. The root cause of this isn't not having enough power points, it's that we don't do enough damage. So I grind for a few more levels on the whole team. I also make sure that Caroso has Mystic Water and that Skatit has a Silk Scarf. That'll boost their water and normal moves respectively. Anything we can do to squeeze out a bit more power on their biggest moves is going to be a big buff. After trying again, we're able to brute force our way through her team, but it wasn't easy. It still took tons of power points, and there were some close calls on avoiding letting them fall into red health so that they can't use full restores. In the end, though, we did still win. Third is Ice Trainer Glacia. Nothing too interesting here, I just brute force our whole team with Brick Break and Vital Throw. We almost went down, but Skatit could have finished it if it came to that. Fourth is Dragon Trainer Drake. Shellgon is first, so I just use Ice Beam and Surf to take it down. It hit a weak Dragon Claw and used a full restore, but we weren't in danger. Next are two Flygons, and they're both double weak to ice, so both were one-shots, although one did start a Sandstorm that didn't affect us due to us being part Rock-type, and we took a bit more damage from the second one's Dragon Breath. Fourth is Altaria, and we instantly get paralyzed. Ice Beam nearly one-shots it, and then Sandstorm leaves him with a sliver, but he just uses full restore, so I just use recover. We took more hits and couldn't move from paralysis, including a crit, so before we went down I switched for Skatit, it got paralyzed on the first Dragon Breath, we got hit by another one, then I got to use Heal Bell, then just finished it with return. Heal Bell removes the status afflictions on our whole team, it's a lifesaver. Finally, last is Salamence, so it's back out to Caroso for Ice Beam, but we go down to one Dragon Claw first. I send out Makit, cheap shot it with Fake Out, hardly get hurt by Crunch, but hardly hurt him back with Brick Break. He starts using Fly and it nearly takes us out in one hit, but our Vital Throw crit him to bring him into Red Health. He ate a Berry to get above Red Health, he finished us, and I sent out Skatit to finish it with Return. If he didn't have that berry, he probably would have used a full restore instead, and we would have lost. Finally, the Pokemon Champion. It starts horribly every single attempt with this song and dance routine where no one on the team can beat Skarmory in less than a thousand hits, and he spams Toxic so we keep getting poisoned. That makes us switch to Skatit to use Heal Bell, then we throw in Charm a few times, but then I switch back to Caroso, that way I can do some decent damage and also use Recover to stay healthy for the rest of the team, but I'll often just get poisoned again when I do that. We often lose too much of our team to continue from this routine, and even when we make it past that, we don't make it very far at all. Two of our Pokemon are way slower than our team, and the fast one hardly does any damage. If speed and damage is the problem and we already have held items to help with it, then I've got no choice but to come back a few levels higher. After some solid grinding, we come back. Right away, we're hit by Toxic as we deal good damage with Surf. He scattered spikes, so all of our switches on our side now hurt as we finish it off. 
I switch for Skatit and ring the heel bell as Claydol comes out and hits Earthquake. I then Shadow Ball it for decent damage, and it starts Light Screen. I use Return to keep doing damage, it does a lot, and he uses Reflect. He then has a full restore, and my Shadow Ball really isn't doing much anymore, but I keep using it. Skatit goes down to a crit, though. I play it risky and have Makit come out and hit Brick Break to break both the Reflect and the Light Screen, but it still doesn't do much, as expected, and Earthquake hurts. Our follow-up shot took him down, though. I'm just happy he didn't use something like Psychic. I switch to Corroso for Armaldo and use Surf to nearly get a one-shot. That is the hardest to say sentence in the world. Say that out loud right now. I dare you. It just took me ten tries. We took a bit of damage from Ancient Power. He used a full restore, and then we just hit another two Surfs for the knockout. Agron is next, and his Earthquake took us to only five health, but one Surf took him down. And I switched to Makit for Cradilly. If I say it a new way every episode, then I'll get crucified in a new way each time, too. One Brick Break took him down, and last was Metagross, so I sent out Corroso, just for him to instantly faint to Spikes, so I could switch back to McKit to use Fake Out. I'm proud of myself on that one. It didn't do much, but I'll take what I can get. Earthquake hits him hard enough to get him into red health, his Psychic brings us deep into red health, he eats a berry to get out of full restore range, and we finished off with Brick Break, winning the run. Well, that was a weird run. Lots of disobedience early and surprisingly competitive fights in late game. I really hope that you guys liked that run. For next Saturday's Pokemon challenge, I'm thinking I am going to do one that you guys have been asking for forever. Munchlax only in Pokemon Platinum. The slowest Pokemon in the franchise. That's gonna suck. <laughs> As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, in the Pokemon Challenge section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, and stay tuned. If you guys want to see me do more challenges like this, please let me know in the comments or on Twitter. I can always use more ideas from you guys on what I should play next. Also, check out the playlist in the description if you want to watch all the Pokemon challenges that I've already uploaded. If you guys want to see more Pokemon stuff from me, my friend Wadageek and I just finished a Gen 1 randomizer over on his channel, linked in the description. Also, you can watch myself, What a Geek, and Gooset playing Pokemon Stadium here on my channel. Also, come to my Twitch TV streams and tell me that this video sent you. It's always cool to hear how you found the channel. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.